Hey there friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and I have a lesson today for you for the Jason Isbell classic, Cover Me Up. This is the one from his 2013 album, Southeastern. It's an absolute classic of a song, and if you're a fan of the Morgan Wallen version from 2020, what I'm going to show you here will work for that version as well. So the sheet music gives you everything you need, the lyrics and the chords. I'll show you a bunch of different tabs, beginner-friendly, a bit more advanced ones for the intro riff, um, standard tuning as well as drop D tuning, chord progression, strumming, all that stuff. It's a four-pager. I spent a lot of time on it. Check that out. PlaySongNotes.com. It's lesson 376. Um, now in this video, I'm going to dive right into the main riff. You hear that riff in the intro. You hear it in the verse. You hear it in the chorus. It's the most fun part, the most distinctive part of the song to play. I'm going to show you a standard tuning version first, then I'll get into a drop D version. And with each of those, I'll so, sort of start with the basics and pile on the, the skill on top of that if you want to keep going with it. Now, if you want to learn the full song, I have a uh, separate video on my website. It's for members only. Um, you can find more info at playsongnotes.com. That'll teach you the chord progression, the strumming, and I'll do two beginning to end covers of this song, one in standard tuning and one in drop D tuning, just to show you how it sounds. So many of you have been requesting that, and I'm proud to bring that to you, uh, those of you who are supporting me either monthly or annually. So thank you very much for the support. Um, it keeps these lessons coming, and it is tremendously appreciated. So uh, let's get into it. I don't want to waste any more time. Uh, playsongnotes.com for all the goods, and otherwise, in this video, I'll show you what you need to know to get started with Cover Me Up by Jason Isbell. Let's go. All right, friends, so let's start off by diving into this riff. And again, for now, I'm going to be no capo. I'm going to be standard tuning. I'll get to drop D in a little bit. If you're in drop D, you can stay there because this first part is going to be all about the sort of thinner strings that are unchanged, right? To get right to the riff, let's look at this. This is the sort of lay of the land, right? These are the melody notes that you hear in the riff. If you were to hum the main part of the riff, right? And da, 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 da. So these are the notes that are going to shine through if we, even if we were to do something much more full like this. So I was adding a bunch of filler strums there, a bunch of filler you know, notes to these plucks, but the notes you see on the screen right now are the sort of hummable main part of this, of this riff. And before I move on really quickly, let me just talk about timing. This song is going to be in 6-8 time, so we have 6 beats per measure effectively, and note that the riff starts on the 4 count of a sort of lead-in measure before the first full measure. So it's going to be, if we were to count it, just so you understand it, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, and it repeats, okay? So just understand that that timing is going to um, follow us in everything I'm about to show you. Okay, so now that you know those lead notes, let's get to um, the really full, awesome sounding, full fleshed out version, but let's do it step by step. So the first thing I want to do, I'll show you this tab here. A couple things I'm going to teach you. One is the starting position for your hand. This is going to be really important because if you ever want to add those full sort of strummy fills, you kind of need to have these fingers in a good foundational starting point to set things up for success. The other thing you're going to notice here is the, the lead notes that I just showed you before are highlighted in yellow here, just so you can kind of recognize them. But I also am starting to bring in some of those fills, right? So basically what I'm showing you here, if you played it, okay, one more time, and I'll explain this. I'll explain what's going on here. Okay, so first up, hand position. This is really important. You want to have, instead of doing a regular D shape, which only frees up your pinky to do these additional notes, that's a lot harder. What I recommend doing instead is this D with these two fingers. So our index finger is going to be on the second fret of the third string, and then our middle finger will be on the second uh, the third fret of the second string, okay? So if we just play the fourth, third, and second strings, technically this is effectively a D for all intensive intents and purposes here. Um, but what it's going to do, the reason we're doing this, is it frees up our ring finger here to do some of this stuff on the fourth fret. It's much easier than if your pinky were to do it, okay? So that's why I'm doing it. This might seem unnatural at first. You just got to spend some time, give it a few days, go into this position um, with a D shape. And um, 
you know, get, get used to it. Because what's gonna happen next is we're gonna add our left ring finger on this fourth fret of the third string, then we're gonna take it off. That's the first two notes here, okay? Ring finger, fourth fret, index finger, second fret. So fourth fret, second fret, and then we lift off our index finger, but get ready to put it back down, and, our, our, and then uh, our middle finger stays down, okay? So, and then now what we're gonna do is put down our, our index finger back, and then put our ring finger on this fourth fret of the fourth string. So if you just play the second, third, and fourth string, you get this. I, I sometimes will add the open fifth string. And if you're in drop D, you can add the open low E string. But don't do that if you're not in drop D yet, because it won't sound good. Okay? So, that's the first little phrase we want to practice. Notice how my middle finger on my left hand is staying still. Okay? And if you want, you can start to bring in a hammer on on that first note. Okay? I'm basically plucking it with the second string, second fret exposed up here. And I'm hammering that fourth fret on the third string from two to four. Then second fret, then open, then this little triad right here. Okay? That's the first phrase you want to do. That's probably the trickiest one, I think, because you're kind of having to keep a good two-finger foundation up here. The rest of the things are a bit easier. So the next one, it's going to start on the same note we ended on, this F-sharp note. And we're going to go from fourth fret to index finger second fret to open. And then we want to put our hands in a G shape. Now, the way I do this typically is I'll do a ring finger on the low E string. And I'll usually put my um, uh, pinky up here in the third fret of the second second uh, second string. You don't have to play that. You could just play the thickest four strings if you want. But um, let me flash this real quick. So you see the chords. I have a D, a D sus two. You'll need those in general. But this G, this is what I'm talking about. See how I'm only playing the um, thickest five strings, and I have the third fret right here. And sometimes I'll leave the thinnest string open. Basically, I'm not doing this. I'm not playing a bright, normal, regular, cheery G. It's too bright and cheery for this song. I think you want to do this, which is a bit more of a neutral, almost like a power chord G, right? Um, but anyway, back to this chart here. Again, from our starting point. Again, I'll just do the thickest four or five strings, okay? And then, Open, uh, open to four, fourth to open on the fourth string to fifth string to fourth string and then back to the D. And you can do a regular D here if you want. Or, or this one, it doesn't really matter for the final two measures. So this first little passage I showed you, if you did it by itself. Whoop. Okay, I messed up there. Let me do it again. So that's going to be the first thing we want to get familiar with. If you're just getting started with this, take time with this one. Spend, you know, don't don't expect yourself to go past this at first. Do this so you get comfortable with it, right? This open, this first D position is going to matter. Getting your ring finger. If you're not used to that, that's a tricky thing to do. So don't feel bad if it's taking you a while. But that's the first thing we want to do to take us on our way here. The next thing I'll show you is this tab. Now this one is basically showing you a bunch of extra filler strings and notes you could add when you're playing this. So the main idea here is you start off with the same shape and really like imagine for those first four plucks you're going to be playing the second, third, and fourth strings all the time, okay? Okay, that's the first four. This is what I already showed you, and if you're keeping your fingers here in their positions, it's not your fingers are already where they need to be, right? Whoop. Okay. And if 
you know that melody, uh, if you hear it, you kind of uh, you kind of hear it even though you're playing more strings than just the lead. Right? Okay, so the second phrase, going to the G. Those are the lead notes, fourth to second to open to open. We already learned that in the prior exercise here. But we're going to start this one where we ended the first phrase, which is, which is this D with the F-sharp bass. Four, two, three. And notice in the second chord what is similar. The second chord, what's similar is our third fret note is staying still. So this finger is going to stay still in the first two of these chords here. We're just going to move our left index finger over here. So it's going to be second, open, third. Okay? And then we're going to do third and fourth strings open, and then go to the G. Okay, this one's tricky. Plucks leading to the G chord. And let me do the D for context ahead of it, okay? Check this out. And the chord that I just played, the ended the D phrase, that's the first chord of the G phrase. Okay? And then for this final phrase, it's open, open on the third and fourth strings. Fourth fret on the fifth string. Fourth fret on the fourth string. Then do a D. Okay, that's basically it, so. So I'm just adding filler strums here. But basically what I have tabbed out is gonna be the structure of what you need. You can add filler strums um, in between um, when you, like for example, you get to the D, you know, just up, down, up, and then continue the phrase. G, up, down, up. But you want to have the timing be consistent, right? Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, So that's the standard tuning way to play this riff. And you're going to need this riff in the intro, you'll need it in the verse, and you'll need it in the chorus. So that's pretty much proof that you can play it in standard tuning there. But what I want to do now is go to drop D tuning. Whoops. Okay, I think that sounds good. Now when you're drop D tuning, here is what is different, okay? The chords for the D, you can play now the thickest uh, thickest string and the, the, the A string as well in your D. Your D sus2 stays the same. Your G is going to be different though. This is the biggest change. Instead of doing third, open, open, third, you have to do fifth fret. Because this is now your, your G note, okay? So index finger up here, ring finger down here. Okay, and I'm muting the fifth string. Now if you want, there's an optional thing you can do a uh, fifth, fifth fret twice in a row. Fifth fret, fifth fret, open, open, third. Okay, I'm never pushing down the thinnest string. I'll leave it open or I'll mute it. Right, the B minor and the E minor, um, I'll get to those later. Those happen in the, um, in the other parts of the song. But if we get to the riff, it's all the same. You start with the same starting chord shape. But the cool thing is now is, 
When you do that first strum on the D, you can sneak in a light brush on those thicker strings. This is the simple version. Right? Get used to this before you bring in the filler stuff. Now, if you want to get to the filler stuff, here's the tab for it. It's basically the same thing I showed you before, right? Learn the lead notes first, learn these like filler notes that are next to them, and you can basically then add filler strums separately, okay? But you do it in that order. Don't just um, expect to get all this nuanced filler strum strumming, filler note strumming out of the gate. You kind of have to do the homework first, right? Learn that first, then bring in just a single strum of the chord. Then bring in the filler, uh, the filler notes around it, right? Then you can do it with the filler strumming in between the gap, sort of. So that's all you're going to need for this intro riff, uh, this main riff of the song. You're going to use this in the intro. You're going to use this during most of the verse, right? And you're actually going to use this at the end of the chorus. So whether you want it to be in standard tuning, whether you want to be in um, drop D tuning, it's all good. And I'll tell you what, if you add a capo to the second fret, which is what Jason Isbell does when he plays it live, it makes it a bit easier to play because the frets are smaller by a little bit up here compared to up here. So it means that you're having to stretch a lot less. I mean, maybe not a lot less, but a little bit less. And that can make it uh, easier, especially when you're practicing this day after day and you're trying to get the hang of it. So that's going to be, uh, that's gonna be it for, for this lesson for learning um, the main riff of this song. Now, if you're interested in learning uh, the chord progressions and you want to see me play it from beginning to end um, in standard tuning and in drop D tuning, um, I have a members only video on my website. It'll show you basically my approach to using what I just showed you um, combined with the singing and the chord progression and the strumming. And there, I'm going to explain in that video some tricky things, um, some tricky situations that I work through. Because when you're playing this song honestly, doing this riff seamlessly and singing and worrying about strumming and timing, it gets harder. It gets hard to do, right? Because you don't want the vocals to get overshadowed by the riff. You don't want to lose timing with your tempo, right? So I'm going to explain places where I kind of cut corners, places where you don't need to do the riff, places where I think you definitely need to do the riff, and all that sort of thing. So that's a members-only video. Thanks to all of you who are supporting me um, on Patreon through your monthly or your annual um, uh, support. It's tremendously appreciated. And again, you can get the sheet music for this entire song at my website, playsongnotes.com. And that's where you can find everything about becoming a member and um, uh, the sheet music and the members only video. So thanks very much for watching y'all. I hope this is helpful for you and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.